happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, you know, we've been going through Genesis, and um, this next chapter would have been Sodom and Gomorrah, and the only mother mentioned in that chapter turned into a pillar of salt. So I figured we'll skip that chapter for Mother's Day. We'll come back in a week or two. But uh, Acts chapter 12, um, if you want to look, I just want to thank all the women in our church this morning. Next service, we'll specifically thank mothers, I believe, is what pastor's doing. But this chapter, just all the faithful women in our church, I want to thank each of them. Whether you're a mother or not, and I know not all of them are in your life, teaching classes and stuff. But just all the ladies in our church, thank you for everything you do. And tonight, or this morning, I'm going to have a look at them. Rhoda, this is probably the lady in the Bible I've laughed most at more than anyone else. She made a mistake, but looking at this, she was a faithful woman. And this morning, I just wanted to thank all the faithful ladies in our church and look at Rhoda, something she did. Um, that was just being faithful. Something we skip over, we don't pay attention to, but she was faithful. And I just want to thank all of our faithful ladies this morning for Mother's Day. But this is a time in church history, um, the church is booming. Chapter 10, Corn Cornelius gets saved. He, him and his family are the first Gentiles to be saved. Chapter 11, Peter comes back and tells the church everyone's excited. Causes some problems at first, but then they're excited to hear that God saves the Gentiles too. They realize this is God's will, not just for the Jews to be saved. But then we get to chapter 12, and as God does things, we know Satan often is going to try to stop it, going to try to slow it down. And we see some bad things start happening um, persecution-wise. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now about the time that Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. So Acts 12, 1, we see Herod the king is going to start persecuting the church. 2 says, And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. That makes him the second martyr besides Stephen behind Stephen. And verse 3 says, And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Excuse me. When he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands, and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true what was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. So Peter's locked up in prison, Herod's going to kill him the next morning, but the church is gathered together praying, we'll see in a second, and this angel comes and he frees Peter. I love it, the angel, it says he smites Peter, and Peter wakes up, he thinks it's a dream, but Peter realizes now that God did send an angel, and Peter is now free. Verse 11 says, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know that of a surety the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came into the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a certain damsel, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And, he, and they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so, and they said, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And Peter goes on. And um, they continue praying and preaching these things. But let's go ahead and pray real quick, and then we'll get into the story of Rhoda. Lord, as we come in your presence this morning, Lord, just um, thank you so much for this day, this day we set aside to celebrate our mothers, Lord. But as Mark said, thank you so much that we can every day thank our mothers and just for everything they do for us. Thank you for that. I pray just um, anyone here this morning doesn't say that they would be saved, Lord, but help each of us to look at Rhoda and just be more faithful, Lord, to you as she was, Lord. And each of the ladies in our church that are faithful, that are serving you, whether we see it or not, thank you so much for them. Lord, we pray this, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, chapter 13 says, And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, verse 13 says, And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a certain damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. That's the only time she's mentioned in all the Bible. She's mentioned in verses 13, 14, and 15, and then we never see her again. 
She was behind the scenes, but I want to look at some things this morning that Rhoda did, that Rhoda was a faithful woman. I just want to thank all the faithful ladies in our church this morning. But some things she did that maybe we don't even pay attention to when we read this story. But we see when verse 12 says, When he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. We see she's at this house praying with the other believers. I'm just thankful for the ladies in our church that take the time to go to the prayer list that pray for one another. We know we may not see it, but those in the church that take time just to pray for one another, we're thankful for them. You know, they're doing what they're doing things for God, whether we see it or not. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. And then um, we know we need to be praying, but God blessed a mother early in the Bible. Um, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we see a woman named Hannah could not have kids. And the Bible records, and it came to pass, she's in the temple, and it came to pass. As she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for the out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of me. We see Hannah is another mother that was spent time praying. We see she they couldn't have a kid, but she went on and she was praying, and Eli said, You know what? Because you're praying, God's heard your prayer. And we see that chapter she has a child. That same year she has a child, within the next year she gives him back to her um, Gives, the, gives Samuel back to God, and we see how mightily God uses Samson, or Samuel. But we see faithful women, they pray. And those in our church that take time to pray, whether we see it or not, even some of our shut-ins, I know that haven't been here for a while, there's a couple that when I go in, they just start going down the prayer list off the top of their head. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? They spend time praying. You know, while we may not see it, we're thankful for those ladies that pray. Proverbs 15, 29 says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. You know, this Mother's Day, whether you have kids or not, just simply praying, you're a special mother, or you're a special lady, and we appreciate those that pray. But as we go on, we see, and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. So she's there praying, but she hears Peter knocking at the door. She prays, and then she goes to the door. Something simple, something we wouldn't think about. But, you know, those ladies in our church that go out and greet people at the door, just that are there for others, we can thank God for them. We read over this, we don't think anything about it. She gets up, goes to the door, and then we laugh at her because we can't bring Peter in the door. She didn't know the door. She just went to the door and forgot to open the door. That's why we all laugh at her a lot. But Rhoda, she went to the door. When there was a need, she immediately responded. Psalm 84 said, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Mark 9.41 says, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. We see she did something behind the scenes. These other people keep on praying. They don't believe her when she says what happens. But Rhoda went to the door. She did something behind the scenes for God. Whether anyone noticed it or not, it's recorded. God saw it. And those in our church that do things behind the scenes, that the ladies that take care of things behind the scenes, we may never notice. We need to be thankful for them. She was there. She went to the door. She had some behind the scenes. This reminds me of another lady named Anna. Anna, we read about her when we read about the birth of Christ. Jesus, um, Mary goes to Elizabeth's house. They're both expecting Elizabeth, expecting John the Baptist. Mary's expecting Jesus Christ. Both miraculous. But we see when Joseph and Mary have, when Mary has Jesus, Joseph and Mary take Jesus to the temple, and there's there this lady named Anna. It says, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. See, Anna, she just stayed at the church praying. People may not have noticed this. They may not have thought much about her. We may not think much about what Rhoda is doing here in Acts chapter 12. But we see Rhoda, when these are praying, and then Peter comes to the door, she goes to open the door. She did something behind the scenes that no one may have noticed, but she's serving God. And you know, we're thankful for those faithful ladies that just serve God behind the scenes. But notice it says, And Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda, and when she knew Peter's voice, 
Now, I'm sure a lot of people knew Peter's voice. Peter's knocking at the door, and she recognizes his voice from behind the door. She had paid attention to his needs before. You know, sometimes the greatest thing someone can do for another person is simply listen. You know, we have ladies in our church, it never ceases to amaze me. Sometimes, especially Sunday nights, right? Because Sunday morning we're all super hungry and we get out of here right after church, right? But Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, there'll be people sitting here. I've accidentally turned the light on on people where they were sitting. I couldn't see them when I came in and turned the lights out. And people jump up, scared me. But they're sitting there listening to one another, talking about what they need. You know, these faith, this faithful lady, Rhoda, she knew Peter's voice. She had listened before. She was paying attention to his needs. James 1, 19 and 20 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of God of man worketh not the righteousness of God. We see God, through the disciple James, he commands us and he says, Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We need to not get mad fast. We need to be slow to talk, think about what we're going to say, not say stupid things, right? When we just start babbling about stuff, normally it comes out dumb. But we need to think about what we're going to say. But it says, let every man be swift to hear. Rhoda, this lady who we often overlook, she prayed, she went to the door, but she knew Peter's voice. She had listened before she recognized his voice. And we see that in 2 Samuel 14, 2 to 3, Joab, David's general, gets the help of this, uh, this um, wise woman, David, King David's son Absalom has left the kingdom. Joab is very close with David. He notices this is killing David, and he recruits the help of this lady. And it says, And Joab sent to Tekoa, and fetched thence a wise woman, and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner, and put on now mourning apparel, and anoint thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead, and come to the king and speak on the manner unto him. So Joab put the words on her mouth. She listened to what Joab needed to help David, and she was able to have this conversation with David that ultimately resulted in his son coming back. Now, we know things after that point were handled well, and Absalom tried to take over the kingdom. But this lady, like Rhoda, she was able to listen to Joab and go simply do what needed to be done. She was a faithful woman. Rhoda was faithful. She prayed. She did behind-the-scenes stuff when she went to the door. She listened. But you know what? She wasn't perfect. Just because someone's perfect doesn't mean we forget them. You know, we often say people, we as Christians, when someone's down, we are so slow to help them back up. But we all know even faithful people are going to make mistakes. And Rhoda here, she makes a mistake, and it says, And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to heart and named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Keep in mind, Peter's just broke out of prison. Right? They're going to kill him the next morning. He's just broke out of prison because of an angel. He's sleeping between two guards. He gets out of, you know, he's probably nervous trying to get in the house, and as he's knocking and knocking and knocking, she's so excited to hear his voice, God has answered your prayers, she doesn't let him in. He just escaped out of jail, though, trying to kill him the next morning. But she forgot to let him in. She made a mistake. But you know what? No one is perfect. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But 1 Corinthians 15.10 says, By the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. We see, Rhoda was faithful, but she wasn't perfect. You know, just because someone isn't perfect doesn't mean God can't bless what they're doing. Rhoda made a mistake here. She forgot to let Peter in. I think this is one of the funniest verses in the whole Bible. They're praying for him to get there, to be safe, and he is, and she forgets to let him in. But you know, nonetheless, she was faithful. She's going to answer the door. She was there praying. She knew his voice, and it says she ran in. She opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. This faithful lady, Rhoda, she was, did not open the door. She did not open the gate for gladness. She was happy. I'm thankful for the faithful ladies in our church that are able to be happy and rejoice with one another when we see the victories in one another's lives. I didn't even think about this verse. I was, saying, I was studying this, but there's a verse that says that when one weeps, we weep together. When one rejoices, we rejoice together. You know, we're thankful for the ladies in our church that when someone has a victory in their lives, they're the first ones to go on to encourage the encouragers in our church. You know, whether a mother or not, we can celebrate them today because they're glad. They're able to encourage us, encourage one another. Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It talks about Elizabeth and Mary um, both miraculously having children. <laughs> Elizabeth, very old, and her husband had never been able to have kids. And God gives her John the Baptist. And Mary, the virgin, has the Son of God. And it says in Luke 1, 41, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary... The babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Her cousin Mary comes over. They're both miraculously expecting kids. But you know what? Elizabeth was able to look past hers for a minute and celebrate Mary's victory. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. This Mother's Day, let's not forget to thank the ones that are able to encourage us here at the church that rejoice when we have victories, that are able to listen to us, they pray for us. These faithful ladies, we need to be thankful for them. Amen. Rhoda, she prayed, she went to the door, she listened, she wasn't perfect, we see, but she was glad. And it says, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened the door, not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. I see she shared the good news. Rhoda, she ran in, she didn't miss a beat, she runs in and immediately goes to tell these people, to tell those that were praying for Peter the good news of what had just happened. You know, Bible Baptist Church here, some of the best witnesses we have are ladies. You know, we have some ladies that are able to go out and bring people in all the time. Um, we just thank God for those ladies that are and share the good news with others. Romans 10, 15 says, How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You know, it's a beautiful thing when anyone goes and shares the gospel. And this Mother's Day, maybe there's someone here that isn't a mother, but there's a lady here we can thank that has shared the gospel maybe with us, maybe with others. We need to recognize that. In John 4, 28 to 30, we see the woman at the well. It says, The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. We see this woman at the well, when she met Jesus, they had this conversation. She realized that he is the Christ, he's the promised Messiah. She runs into the town and immediately begins sharing the good news. You see, Rhoda here, she has faith, she's praying, and when she realizes what's going on, she's glad, she jumps up, and she runs inside to tell everyone the good news. We need to be thankful for those that encourage us to tell the good news of what maybe we've done, to celebrate the victories with us, I mean, but also that they'll share the gospel with others. Don't ever underestimate when you give someone a track, whenever you tell your kids about Christ, whatever it may be, don't underestimate the power of witnessing to someone else. And we have faithful ladies here at Bible Baptist that do that, and we're thankful for them. And then we see Rhoda, it says she knew Peter's voice, opened up the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. Nobody believed her, right? They're all gathered together praying for God to work in Peter's life to get Peter to safety. They're praying, they're seeking God's help, and they totally don't believe that God answered their prayers. And I know I'm guilty of that, we're all guilty of that. I know a year ago when Mark Rogers was here, Papa, him and I were talking about that in the office. I don't know what we're talking about, but just sharing stories of times we prayed for something to happen, and it happened, but we didn't believe that it did happen, right? Which is shocked when God answers our prayers. But Rhoda wasn't. She was excited, she knew God answered their prayers, but when she went in and no one believed her, it says, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, it is his angel. They said, you know what? It's probably just his guardian angel came to let us know he died or whatever. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. See, Rhoda, she prayed. She went to the door and some behind the scenes things maybe nobody noticed. She listened. She was glad. She shared the gospel. But I see she was steadfast. She goes and she shares. She goes in and tells everybody, hey, Peter's here. And no one believed her. She says, God answered our prayer. No one believes her. But she can constantly affirm that it was even so. Now, again, I don't know why she didn't just let Peter in the door. But she's so excited. And even though no one believes her, she's so excited that she continues saying, no, Peter's here. God has answered our prayer. She was steadfast. Ephesians 6.13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We've had some really faithful ladies, some that we just mentioned in prayer requests, that have been safe for years. Some will be here throughout the day. Some are here right now, of course. But the faithful ladies that have just stood with Christ, no matter what's come, no matter what's happened in their lives, we need to thank God for these faithful ladies. Even after Christ died, the women who followed him during his earthly ministry, they did not quit following him, but they went to anoint him in his grave that morning, the Easter morning. Matthew 28, 1 to 6 says, And the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene.